Fox 31 and Channel 2 News present a special tribute to Black History Month. Join us as we explore, discover, and uncover Colorado's hidden history. I'm Shaul Turner. Colorado has a rich history, and there are many stories to tell about African Americans. It's all part of Colorado's hidden history. Rugged cowboys, scouts, and men called Buffalo Soldiers ventured into unknown territory. Escaped slaves took on unimaginable odds in order to build unimaginable fortunes in the Colorado Territory. He was chased off by the sheriff. A fearless woman, driven by compassion, provided life-saving medical care to those from every walk of life. You'll hear from the Denver man Dr. Justina Ford brought into this world, and the top doctor who's carrying on her work today. And from iconic jazz greats like Duke Ellington, Billie Holiday, and Count Basie, to today's hottest stars like Lizzo, who once worked at a King Supers in Aurora. Denver has spawned and featured some of the greatest talent in the world. Also from Denver, actor Don Cheadle, actress Pam Greer, and Philip Bailey of Earth, Wind & Fire, Erica Badu, and others as well, we sit down with a global dance icon based in Five Points. <laughs> so that's what's in store in this Black History Month special. Let's begin with Cowboys of the West. Just trying to stay on a bull. They were brave, loyal, and tough. Any bull rider that tells you he wasn't scared to get on a bull is lying. They're lying. African-Americans escaping the chains of slavery to venture west, finding work as ranch hands and scouts. And the ranch owners would just say, the boys, the boys are out watching the cows, the boys, the boys, the boys, and then they start calling them cowboys. It's a history that's cherished by many, but it was the popular Hollywood Western that would inspire Abe Morris, who didn't grow up in the West, but in a small town in New Jersey. I love watching the westerns. I watched The Lone Ranger. I watched Roy Rogers. Morris says it was tough to leave everything he knew on the East Coast in order to follow his dream. He found himself in Wyoming in 1974. I was the only black guy in the central Rocky Mountain region. At many times, it was difficult to find acceptance with anyone. This black football player says, what do you know about rodeo? But soon, Morris won everyone over. Where I'm riding, you look at the guys on the back of the shoes, and they are smiling because I've been accepted. Morris eventually became a bull riding champion and first black pro rodeo announcer appearing on Fox Sports and other networks. It's my favorite rodeo without a doubt. I go to Cheyenne every single year. I love going to Cheyenne. The people in Cheyenne treat me extremely well. I was in Cheyenne when Lane Frost got killed and uh, I interviewed him. I was the last person to interview him on camera that day. I cried like a little baby. I broke down and cried. It was hard. Morris knew bull riding wasn't a long-term goal. You never know the outcome. And, and, and they have a saying about, you know, rodeo and bull riding. It's not if you get hurt. It's when mm -hmm. and how bad. So he tried his hand at marketing and financial consulting, which wasn't easy. But a cowboy doesn't give up. Being in rodeo, I didn't, you know, you don't always win. But my manager told me, he said, some will, some won't. So what next? Morris went on to achieve huge success and keep stacks of awards in his home. I ended up third in the nation based on sales. And I had signed up over 860 clients. I signed a lot of rodeo cowboys up. He later published his autobiography, My Cowboy Hat Still Fits. But this rugged cowboy has another passion. His cookie business is thriving. I didn't have a girlfriend, I'm single. I love chocolate chip cookies, so I learned to bake chocolate chip cookies. These days, he's taking more orders than he can handle. I know one thing. These are going to be gone in eight seconds. That's okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Morris has clearly made his place in history. He says he wants to inspire children of all backgrounds to go for their dreams. It may take more than eight seconds, but success is certainly worth it. If something fails or falters down the road, you have more than one thing. By the way, Abe Morris has been nominated to be inducted into the Cowboy Hall of Fame. For more information about how to get some of those cookies, visit our website homepage, kdvr.com, and click on this story. Coming up, Breckenridge draws skiers and tourists from around the world, but the pristine mountain town is also home to an escaped slave who became one of the nation's first black business moguls. And how Black History Month celebrates something we all have in common, regardless of race, color, or creed.
Welton Street in Denver's Five Points neighborhood was home to more than 50 bars and clubs during the first half of the 20th century. It was known as the Harlem of the West. Now at that time, blacks weren't allowed to stay at hotels in the city of Denver. So nationally known performers like Nat King Cole, Billie Holiday, Duke Ellington, and many others stayed at the Rossonian Hotel, where their shows drew crowds of all races. The building still stands at the corner of Welton and North Washington. Denver's beautiful skyline features towering world-class hotels today, but in 1874, the Inner Ocean Hotel was the largest in the city. It was built by the son of a white plantation owner from Virginia, but because his mother was a slave, he was as well, enlisted as a mere piece of property. That's until Barney L. Ford escaped and found his home in Breckenridge, Colorado. Tourists from all over the world travel to Breckenridge to enjoy its magnificent ski slopes. But many would be surprised to learn that the mountain town was once home to one of history's greatest civil rights figures and entrepreneurs, Barney L. Ford. He is one of our most obscure, important pioneers, founders of the state. He should not be this obscure. Ford lived in this grand home at 111 East Washington Avenue in Maine something almost unimaginable for a man who was born into slavery in Virginia in 1822. He had every opposition to his forward path, and he never gave up. After escaping through the famed Underground Railroad, he eventually ended up out west, hoping to mine gold and stake his claim. But that dream would never come to reality. He was burned out. He was chased off his claims. He was chased off by the sheriff. Men of color did not have property, real property owning rights. Determined not to give up on finding his way to success, Ford opened a barber shop in Denver at 1514 Blake Street in the downtown district known today as Lodo. It was called Ford's People's Restaurant. The building's original doors were on display in Breckenridge, where he also owned several businesses. One of Ford's restaurants set right on Main Street in Breckenridge. You can still visit the building today. It's downstairs at Eric's, owned by the current mayor. Ford went on to create a business empire that stretched from Colorado to Wyoming. He used his newfound influence to fight for equality. Ford traveled to the nation's capital with a petition for equal voting rights when the debate over Colorado statehood started in 1868. Signed by the sons of one of history's greatest opponents of slavery. Here are Lewis and Frederick Douglass Jr., Frederick Douglass's sons something that benefits communities across the West today. He was including everyone, Native Americans, Asians, Hispanics. His contributions, his progression in politics, I think put Colorado in a more progressive position as it is today. You can visit the Barney Ford House Tuesday through Sunday, 10 to three. Admission is free. Coming up, pop star Lizzo, Jackie Brown star Pam Greer, actor Don Cheadle, Philip Bailey of Earth, Wind & Fire. All are from or have lived in Denver. Meet another world famous name still giving back right here in Colorado. And meet a Korean War veteran in Aurora with amazing talent, the famous historic figures he met and captured on canvas. A hub of the arts, Denver's Five Points is one of the city's hottest areas for investors today. Just ask any real estate agent. But its value lies in more than just pricey properties. A walk down Welton or Park Avenue reveals a rich history in arts and entertainment. Its crown jewel, the Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Academy. This is what I have grown to love, see, develop, and it developed me. I, I am honored that I'm a product of this community. 
I'm Cleo Parker Robinson, and this is Cleo Parker Robinson Dance. Born in the famed Rossonian Hotel in the legendary Five Points Jazz District. Charlie Burrell brought me home from the hospital. How good does that get? Cleo Parker Robinson has set the stage and the bar in the art of dance. These dancers that you see come from all over the world. Her mission, to use this universal language to promote peace and unity, and she's proud to call Colorado home. If I'm performing in Egypt or Israel or Bogota, I get to say, come to our city because we'll treat you good. Robinson recalls spending time in the segregated South as a biracial child. And I had to drink out of the colored only water and my mother drank out of the white. But she was drawn to the beauty of dance, excelled and eventually became a global icon, drawing the attention of world leaders. She was appointed by the White House to the National Council for the Arts under the Clinton administration. Robinson launched the first Black History Month celebration in South Africa after the end of apartheid. That was a, a powerful experience for us. Oh, I'm sure. Today, her performing arts troupe and academy is made up of people from around the world, from India to Wyoming. They've come from Egypt, they've come from Singapore. She established the Modern Dance Program at the University of Colorado and the Bachelor of Arts Program at Metro State University. But Robinson has also choreographed a master plan designed to share the art of dance with everyone. A lot of times we go, I'm not a good dancer, I have two left feet, it has nothing to do with that. The soul, the spirit, the body needs to move. 82 Colorado schools now participate in her community programs. We have to teach our children they belong in the world and that they can move through it with that grace and with that strength and dignity. And they learn how to have self-respect and respect for others. Even with all this, at age 71, Robinson says there's still more work to be done. I am not going anywhere anytime soon. We can feel each other's vibrations and we sort of like each other for a minute. And then we add those minutes and then we really, really get to enjoy people around the world. Now from the stage to the canvas, Colorado artists tell a story and this one spans decades. Meet Jess DuBose. Someday they have hidden talent. Sometimes they have a hidden talent. They don't know that they are gifted. So I, I try to bring this out. He pronounces his name Jess DuBose, not Dubois, to avoid being confused with his father. It was after serving his country as a proud Marine in the Korean War that DuBose discovered a hidden treasure within himself at the Colorado Institute of Art. Talk to them about helping me with increase my uh, knowledge of drawing and painting and sculpting. Today, his work is featured in galleries in Santa Fe, Taos, and art venues around the world. I want them to see the people of the, of the past. Impressions of life in the American West. One tribe could have several different chiefs. I used to invite them to my, uh, some of them to my shop in Estes Park. Leaders of the civil rights movement, Portraits of the famed Tuskegee Airmen. A lot of them came up when they signed it. Twenty-some Tuskegee Airmen signed my, my original piece of work. As well as present-day sports icons like John Elway. Sketches of jazz greats like Ray Charles and Billie Holiday fill his walls, not drawn from photographs, but from memory. All those people that are on that board, I've met them from time to time, either, either in Chicago or in Denver on the Five Point area. DeVos even played on stage himself at the Great Rossonian Lounge in Five Points. Then I was introduced to the spoons. Can you draw this guy? Yeah. Okay. We couldn't resist getting a glimpse of DeVos at work. Within minutes, he creates this likeness of Fox 31 video journalist James Long from a much younger picture. DeVos says his dream is to bring people together through his art. Encourage their children and grandchildren. And inspire all of us to find treasures inside that may be hidden as well. Never give up, just keep right on going. Information about how to obtain some of his artwork and upcoming Cleo Parker Robinson classes and performances are featured on our website homepage at kdbr.com. Next, breaking down barriers in medicine. One of Colorado's top doctors reveals how Denver's first African-American woman to practice medicine still has impact today. I am sort of a mentor for many people who are aspiring to walk the path that Dr. Ford has walked in the path that I am walking now. And he was one of the 7,000 babies Dr. Justina Ford delivered. She, she was just a super lady.
Affordable health care is a term we're all familiar with today, but the struggle to obtain it was especially real for those living in Colorado's poorest communities in the 1890s. Dr. Justina Ford used compassion to serve them despite incredible odds. It was in this house, moved from its original location on Arapaho Street to California and 30th and Five Points, that Dr. Justina Ford set up her medical practice in 1912. Inside, her exam room remains the same. The original chair sits in the center of the room, her medical bag atop a chest containing bottles and instruments used to help thousands. Ford graduated from medical school in 1899, but being a woman and being black, she was not allowed to join Colorado's Medical Association or practice at Denver's hospitals. Many could not afford to pay for their care, but Ford showed amazing compassion. Fruits, vegetables, the taxi cab company gave her free services to go to see her patients. Ford provided care to anyone who needed it, regardless of their race. She even learned several languages in order to help those migrating to the West from other parts of the world. During her career, Ford delivered nearly 7,000 babies. Joseph Martinez was one of them. A, a picture of my mother, Justina Ford, helped with the delivery of me. Super cool. This lady is so unique in the and the obstacles that she had to overcome. Just before her death at age 81 in 1952, both the Colorado and Denver Medical Societies acknowledged Ford. Good, is it morning or afternoon now? Today, some of the top doctors in the nation are here in Colorado, and they credit Ford with inspiring them to reach for their dreams. I am Dr. Monique Butler, Chief Medical Officer of Swedish Medical Center. Dr. Butler has long worked to inspire interest in medicine in underserved communities, gaining great recognition. I stand on the shoulders of Dr. Ford. She says paying it forward to the next generation is something that benefits all of us. That They would see me and see other individuals like Dr. Ford and um, know that because I did and because she did, they can. Of course, many more African Americans are part of Colorado's history and are worth honoring. Like Ada B. Evans, mayor of Fair Play, who in 1974 was the first female African American mayor to win the popular vote. Nathan Biffle, who fought segregation and became the first African American captain in Denver's fire department. Lou Vassan, founder of the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo and music promoter of greats like the Pointer Sisters, Prince and Stevie Wonder. And Wellington Webb, who served in the Colorado House of Representatives, received an appointment from President Jimmy Carter and was the first African American mayor of Denver. His wife, Wilma J. Webb, served six terms in the Colorado House of Representatives, also received several presidential appointments and the 2012 Civil Rights Award. Their accomplishments inspire people of all races to work together today to write what will be Colorado's future history. Colorado's museums feature events for the entire family. So here's what's happening this month and throughout the year. On Saturday, February 22nd, there are a few different events, including a black genealogy search group, how to talk to kids about race and current events, and a film on celebrating Black History Month. On Sunday, February 23rd, Parker Arts, Culture, and Event Center is hosting a Family Free Day celebrating Black History Month. And starting Sunday, February 23rd through March 1st, multiple Denver Metro locations, along with Platteville, Greeley, Erie, Fort Collins, and more, are doing a live tour featuring Rosa Parks, National Humanities, and Chautauqua scholar Becky Stone. will portray the role of Rosa Parks and her role in the civil rights movement. I'm Shaul Turner. Thanks for watching this Fox 31 special.